Right, so now we're on to the third stage. You know, this is your, your kind of second component within commercial awareness still, but specifically hitting on that investment banking commercial awareness aspect. So as well as questions like, tell me something interesting happening in the news, tell me about a recent trend, tell me what the M&A uh, deal trends are at the moment, you might get a simple question, tell me about a recent deal. And, and implicitly within that, they don't care about other company deals. The company asking cares about their company deals. Um, so, you know, you've got to have a, I usually say at least one, a two is a safe bet. Um, I have had various interviews, various assessment centers where um, two, having two deals was really important. For example, you have two separate interviews, they both ask um, you for different deals, you can't really ask, you can't give the same one, it's, it's risky doing that. Um, so having two deals. But I would say this was probably something I really didn't like answering because Researching a deal can be very overwhelming. You have a load of information on the press release, including all the deal rationale, all the deal, all the details of the deal, and you have to memorize it. And it might not even come up. It's just one question. Like It seems like a very bad return on investment. Well, this is something that, again, someone who, a very close friend, you know, who gave me loads of mocks, he actually gave me this solution, um, and we'll talk about it on the intern game plan, on, on the blog on the interngameplan.com. Um, this is probably one of the coolest hacks I've, uh, like, um, I, I was helped with over the season itself um, that I'm sharing with you today, and it's called the cookie cutter method. It's all about, um, for, you know, after you're asked that question of tell me about a recent M&A deal, using a very simple, reproducible uh, structure uh, for covering that deal in, in enough detail that's going to convince the interviewer you know what you're talking about, your detail oriented, and you've done your research. Um, and it, the, the most beautiful thing about it, it takes about 30 minutes to implement if you've done it before, compared to what the three hours of memorizing all the information from one particular deal. Um, and it goes like this. You start with a brief overview of the deal, of the deal. that's component one. For example, uh, this company merged with this company for X amount and the, the financial advisors, uh, you, you, financial, you were the financial advisor to the buyer, um, this other company or consortium of like kind of banks was the financial advisor to the acquirer, something like that, or to the target. And so a brief overview. Um, then you move on to three key rationale. The number three is brilliant in interviews. It's just enough for the, for the interviewer to kind of grasp what you're talking about. It gives you that, that overhead kind of perspective um, you know, to, to that interviewer, it's not going to be overwhelming in terms of, oh, here's one idea, here's one synergy, here's another synergy, here's a third synergy, here's a fourth synergy. It's just a very structured, you know, uh, contained kind of approach. Um, and then the final thing is why it interests you. And so, okay, we start, we frame the scene with the overall kind of uh, briefing of the deal. There may be three key rationale, but it's the why does it interest you is when you go from being a standard applicant that gets that tick in the box to that applicant that has stood out that can't be ignored, that has to go to the next round because their commercial awareness is just on point. Um, and that's what we're gonna be talking about now in terms of how do you really uh, flesh out and approach those different components. So, first of all, implicitly within all of this, you know, I've, I've kind of assumed that you can actually find the deals. For some boutiques, it's very easy. It's, 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 it's lovely, you know, kind of, if you go onto Torch Partners, on their website, they have a case study and a really nice, concise description what the company does, the rationale behind the deal that they've kind of executed on, they've helped advise, and it's brilliant. And this, this is usually the case for a lot of the boutiques. For some of the bold brackets, it's not the case. Um, I remember Royal Bank of Canada being a very tough one to look at in terms of them you know, being open and advertising their deals. The key is research, and what you should find, especially for the larger banks that aren't being as, um, you know, as uh, really kind of clear in terms of which deals they've helped advise, and usually it's a lot of deals, especially if they're a very big bank, um, is you want to really kind of find these investor relations documents. So sometimes um, they will have a kind of a, for, for example, Royal Bank of Canada, after a few hours of searching, I found this one report which was summarizing their industrial sector team. And, they, and, and it was kind of like the, uh, you know, mid cap deals within the industrial sector and they were talking about the different trends and then about on, you know, in the middle of this slide deck that I found on the investor relations page was a whole tiled page of all the different deals that they'd completed. And, you know, there wasn't much on it, you know, there wasn't kind of any details like with the boutique, but that's completely fine because all you need to do is you need to get that title of that deal and then type it into Google and type in deal, um, say, I don't know, you know the, the company that's been acquired and the buyer, and then you write press release because it's usually a press release that is kind of published after that deal announcement. And then that should give you enough fuel um, to kind of talk about in the cookie cutter 
the rationale behind that deal and then to lead on to the exploration of why that's going to interest you and ultimately why it leads you to the firm you know because that's that's what's going to really convince them that this is a relevant response this is something um, that's again convincing them that you're, you're someone should be hired by the firm okay so once you've done that briefing um, then what you want to do is you want to move on to the three key rationale now the, the three key rationale you know, is, is, as I said, a great number to do because it's not going to overdo it. If you can't find free key rationale in the press release, go to a different deal. You usually have a nice selection. Okay, go to a different deal. And, and generally speaking, I used to avoid companies like oil-based companies or mining companies. I was more interested in technology companies. Go for the most exciting one. You know, it's nice to be a bit authentic. Go for a different company, a smaller company, and but also go for the one that excites you. It's going to make the process a whole lot easier. Um, and, and sometimes you get that luxury of choosing between a few. Now, within those three key rationale, I would also include make make them short, make them concise, make them nice. So you know when you're when you're in an interview, you can say right. Reason one is it was going to lead to R and D synergies of X amount. Uh, reason number two, um, they have two uh, uh, sectors, uh, sector verticals that they could then synergize and collaborate with. And you're keeping it very simple, nothing overloading. Okay, that interviewer is going to easily get overwhelmed if you're going to provide provide them with a lot of information. They just want this to be a clean answer. It's going to convince them you've done your research. Um, maybe include one stat or two stats, but nothing too much. Nothing too much. Um, then the final thing, the final thing with that interest, why it interests you, potentially the most difficult part of the cookie cutter method, because it's not just copying or summarizing a press release, but also the part where you can add your flair. This is where you know you can use consulting reports, and I urge you to use consulting reports on that sector to talk about what, how does that deal fit in with wider industry trends? How does that deal link with the kind of overall um, vision of, of the investment bank you want to work for? How maybe it shows that you know they're working with some of the most exciting technology companies at the forefront of the UK's uh, tech sector or fintech sector, maybe even more niche than kind of just technology. Um, maybe it's the fact that you know, kind of, it's driving that move towards ESG. Maybe it's an automotive uh, company kind of joining forces or making a partnership between the electric vehicle uh, kind of vertical. And again, this this is all about kind of you know showing your understanding of wide industry trends. Um, now you could go onto the FT and look at commentary on the deal. I don't find them very helpful. Personally speaking, you know, you go to the, to the source of consulting reports. Investment bankers, they use consulting reports. You should use them too. Sometimes they're freely available. And one key example is I remember um, looking at a summary of the group PSA and FCA merger. So, you know, obviously two car companies within the automotive sector. And there was a wonderful report on the McKinsey website talking about this inflection point in the automotive sector. And it just gave a really nice, detailed, intelligent understanding of that the tailwinds and the headwinds in that sector and how this still, and you could then just make the link, this still was really fitting into that wider trend. So that's just gonna help you stand out, use that cookie cutter method. Okay, so the brief overview, three key rationale, maybe a stat in there, why it interests me, and also why that convinces me this is you know, the best place to want to pursue an internship. And that's just gonna give you a solid response and hopefully make what is a difficult question very easy to prepare for.